In this video, we're going to approximate the function a raised to the power of x using the quadratic algorithm. Now, we've already seen the functions e to the power of x and ln x, and we know that these are inverses. And in fact, e to the power of x is just a subset of this function a to the x. We just choose the value of a, which is equal to 2.718 approximately. Now, if we were to take the function e, and instead of raising it to the power of x, we raised it to the power of its inverse, which is the ln x, then we would just get back to this value of x. Now, don't worry too much about this just now. We'll put this into the graphical calculator so you can see it. So that means that what we could do is, instead of raising it to the power of ln x, we could actually raise it to the power of x ln a. So if we were to raise it to the power of x ln a, we would have e to the x ln a, which would be the same as a to the x. So let's go ahead and we'll see this in the graphical calculator, and we'll have a little look at this function a raised to the power of x. So this is the function a raised to the power of x. Now what we actually have here is a family of functions. Because we've chosen this value of a in this instance to equal 1.3. But if we were to increase the value of a, you'll see that we get different functions. Now we could decrease the value of a as well. And whenever we get to the value of 1, you can see we just put the straight line. And then for fractional values, you'll see that the function is mirrored in the y-axis. Now, for values less than zero, the function is undefined because we will have values which will be imaginary. That is, we're going to have the square roots of negative numbers. So let's put this back to the value of 1.3. Now we're going to have a look at the function e to the power of x. And we can see that if we were to draw in its inverse, this is the inverse ln x. Now if we were to raise e to the power of ln x, we'll just get a value of x, which is just the line y is equal to x. And you can see that's what we've got here. But of course it's not defined for values for x less than zero, because those would give imaginary numbers. So we can see here that if we write e to the ln x, we just get back to our value of x. So it means that what we can do is we can write the e to the x ln a, and this is e to the x ln a. Now this is going to be the same as our function a raised to the power of x. And you can see that if I was to put a to the power of x in, you'll see it just sits exactly on the top of this other function here, e x to the ln a. So they're just the same function. So this is the identity we're going to use in order to generate the function a to the power of x using the quadratic algorithm. Now in the example, we're going to work out the value 1.3 raised to the power of 2. So that means that the value for our a is 1.3, which gives us this function here. Now we're wanting to find out the value of 2. So this is the value of 2 at that function. So we go along 2 and we hit the function, and the final answer should be 1.69. So 1.3 raised to the power of 2 should give us 1.69. So let's go through and we'll see how we generate this using the quadratic algorithm. So we want to generate this a to the power of x, but in order to generate this, we have to generate the function e x to the ln a. Now we generate this function in three parts. First of all, we work out the natural log of a, which we do in the first step using hyperbolic vectoring mode. 
We then multiply it by this value x, and we do the multiplication using the linear rotation mode in step 2. And finally, we raise this value to the power of e, and we do that in the hyperbolic rotation mode in step 3. So let's talk our way through each of these steps. We're going to have to work out the natural log of a. So in this we set the value of x0 is equal to a plus 1, y0 is a minus 1, and z0 is equal to 0. And this gives us x0 equal 1.1 plus 1.3 plus 1, which is 2.3, and y0 is 1.3 minus 1, which is 0 0.3. And this should give us the value a half of the natural log of 1.3, which is 0 0.1312. So that's the value we expect to get from the output of the first stage. Now what we want to do is the a multiplication by some value x. Now what we're wanting to do is we want to have 1.3 raised to the power of 2. So the value of x must be a value of 2. But the problem we have here at the moment is that the output from this stage here is a half of the natural log of the 1.3. So in order to get this whole thing multiplied by 2, we're going to have to, first of all, get rid of the half. So this would, in effect, by be a multiplication by 2. And this would just give us the ln x. But then we'd have to multiply it by 2 again in order to get, to get the 2 ln x. So in effect, we're going to have to multiply this whole thing by a value of 4. So in order to do the multiplication by a value of 4, we'll have x0 is equal to 4, y0 is 0, and z0 would be the output from the previous stage, which is this 0 0.1312. And when we multiply this together, we'll get 0.5248. Now finally we're going to have to take this 0.5248 and we're going to have to raise it to the power of e. And we do that in the hyperbolic rotation mode. So we set the x0, y0 to be the value 1.20749. Z0 is the output from the previous stage, which is, is the 0.5248. And this should give us the value e raised to the 0.5248 which is equal to 1.6901, which is approximately equal to 1.3 squared. So these are the numbers we are expecting to get out from our quartic algorithms in step 1, 2 and 3. So let's go ahead and we'll have a look at this in the graphical calculator. Now if you would like, you can open up the simulations in the resources section. So we have three simulations there called step 1, step 2 and step 3. I'm not going to go through all of them in detail because we've seen these simulations uh, several times before. So in the first mode here, we've got hyperbolic vectoring mode. We set the value x0 to 2.3 and y0 to 0.3. So that's this point here. And then we have to decrease off and add on the angles in order to ensure that the value of yi tends to zero. So this is the vectoring mode. And then for each of those iterations, we're going to have to add on and subtract off the angles to get the value of our z0. And these are the angles that we add on and subtract off. And this gives us a final angle of 7.6254 degrees. Now, when we convert this into radians, we get the value of 0.1312. Apology, we get the value 0 0.1331. Now this is very close to 0 0.1312. So let's move on to the next stage. Not also, I'll put a caption at the end of the video showing the actual values we, we expect to get and the simulated values. So in the next stage, we use linear rotation mode in order to multiply by a factor of 4. Now, we expect to get the value 0 0.5248. Whenever we work through this, 
we end up with the value of 0 0.547. And you can see that it's the factor we have here for the yi, which is 0 0.547. So again, you can work through this using the simulations and the resources section, if you like. Finally, we work through the hyperbolic rotation mode in order to get the function e raised to the power of x. Now, whenever we work through this, we get a final result of 1.732, and the expected value is 1.6901. So let's have a look at these in the graphical calculator. So the calculated result is 1.69, and the simulated approximation using the quartic algorithm is 1.732. So these are the calculated and simulated results for each of the three steps. You see the final answer we expect is 1.6901 and we got a value of 1.732. Now we could get a more accurate answer if we used more iterations of the quartic algorithm. So that's all for this video. Thank you for listening. I'll get you on the next video. Goodbye.